Leon in Rotterdam. Yep, Rotterdam. I've been to Amsterdam, but never Rotterdam. I love it. <laughs> what a great country. The only problem with Holland is, is, man, you better watch out for them bicycles. There's, which is great. I mean, I own, a, Terry and I both have Dutch bikes. Um, the Van Moofs love them. But, whew, walk down a sidewalk. Yeah, a lot of bikes. Okay, uh, Leon writes to me and he says, why are there different remastered, remixed versions of songs and albums? Okay, for example, This Masquerade by The Carpenters. Now, I can find the song in 1644, which is, I think he probably means, um, yeah, 1644, sure, that's CD quality. 2448, that's kind of pro quality. And on the album The Carpenters with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, it is there in 2496 and 24192. But now the extra confusing part. In my opinion, the 1644 version sounds the best, probably because it's not overly maximized or compressed. And I have a lot more examples where the 1644 of a song just sounds better than the remastered high-res versions. Well, there, I haven't heard that particular track. I remember the Karen Carpenter, God. And they, they were just a, a, a good group. They, they were a good group. And Richard, wasn't that her brother? Kind of like the, the old uh, Billie Eilish and, and Phineas, uh, you know, brother and sister act, but that was a long time ago and definitely different music. Okay, so I imagine that those are simply upsampled versions of the original. I'll bet that the original was done in analog on analog tape. I'm just guessing here. I haven't done any research on it. And that the original version was mastered properly in the way that they wanted and then released. Um, there is a lot of upsampling without any thought going into it. Just simply put it through an upsampler. And it's a complicated subject. Look, we at Octave Records, there's a whole process, some of which involves upsampling and downsampling and taking DSD to DXD and then back again and going to analog and going through A to D converters. There's all, you know, we do everything by ear and to the best technical ability that we have with the most modern equipment that we can, not, not that we can afford because we're already a million dollars deep into this thing. No, it's spare no expense, get the best there is, which is what we've done. That said, not everybody is as conscience, conscious about sound quality for the same reasons that we are. And that's been around forever. I mean, look, we're audiophiles. We hold high on the shrine of perfection the idea that audio quality is first, period, end of story. I would rather have, and I know people are going to flip out when I say this, I would rather have one of two things. I would rather have a spectacular recording of a good set of music from reasonable musicians than a crappy recording that sounds awful of great musicians. And I know that's hard for people to, but you got to remember, and I've had so many examples of this, it's an injustice, one that raises the hair on the back of my neck. I got to tell you, when you have spectacular musicians and you waste that talent on a harsh or a compressed recording that is unlistenable on a high-end audio system, that's a freaking crime. Sorry, that's just in my, that's a crime against everything we love in music. I mean, 
when I listen to the great recordings, kind of blue, oh, uh, you know, now, can we make recordings today that just blow the socks off of that old Miles Davis? Yeah, of course we can, technically, absolutely, but think of the glory of that. It's a really good recording. It's honest. It has soul. It has magic. It has captured everything about that musical performance that is just, oh, God. And imagine if he had done that and some yahoo on Pro Tools went and did this or that that just mucked it up. This is not a condemnation of Pro Tools, okay? There have been some wonderful recordings made on Pro Tools. The guys over at Lynn Records, I mean, they make great stuff. They honor the music. They honor the recording. They honor me as an audiophile. And not everybody does that. And when that doesn't happen, it gets me riled up. <laughs> In case you can't tell. <laughs> All right, enough. He'll start talking politics next. Yeah, okay. But anyway, back to the question at hand. I, I, I don't know the answer, but I suspect that like so many, many, many remastered versions, they just didn't do a good job and they did it to get a few more bucks out of you. That would be my guess, but I don't know. Okay. Whew. This is probably going to get a lot of hate mail. Sorry about that. Okay, take it easy. <laughs> I should give myself that advice. I'll talk to you later. Bye.